In this video, I'll demonstrate a powerful Blender tool that allows Blender objects to control one another. In this case, when I rotate this first gear, it causes the second gear to rotate, which causes the cylinder to move up and down, which causes the sphere to be pressed down. And you'll notice that this is all happening in real time. So now, if I want to create a Blender animation, all I need to do is to set some keyframes to rotate this first gear, and the other objects will move automatically. This makes setting up the keyframes for an animation much easier. The powerful Blender tool that I'm talking about is called a driver. Drivers can be a complex subject because they can do so much, but I'm going to keep it relatively simple by not diving into the subject too deeply. What I'm going to demonstrate is using drivers to drive the location, rotation, and scale of objects from the location and rotation of other objects. Learning this will give you a nice way to control multiple moving parts. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.81. We'll start by adding a driver to the large gear to allow it to be driven by the small gear. So select the large gear and then press N to open the sidebar. We're going to add the driver to the Y rotation. So right click it and select Add Driver. When you do this, the driver panel will pop up. If you move your cursor outside the panel, it will close. You'll also notice that the Y rotation area is now a purple color, which indicates that a driver has been added. To reopen the driver panel, right click the purple area and select Edit Driver. You can also delete the driver by clicking one of these. I'm going to select Edit Driver. The bottom part of the panel is where we specify the object that will be driving our gear. In this drop down menu, make sure that Transform Channel is selected. This is the only option that we'll be using during the video. It means that we're going to use transform values like location, rotation, and scale. We're going to be driving the large gear with the small gear. So click in the object box and select small gear. And specifically, we're going to use the Y rotation value of the small gear. So set the type to Y rotation. The Y rotation value of the small gear will now be put in a variable named var. A variable can be thought of as a container that holds something. In this case, the container is named var and it holds the Y rotation value of the small gear. So for example, if the Y rotation value is 20 degrees, then var will equal 20. So what do we do with this variable? It's used right here when scripted expression is selected. Scripted expression is the only driver type that we'll be using during this video. It means that we're going to use our variable in a programming expression. With this setup, whatever this expression evaluates to will be the rotation value that our large gear uses. We'll start by setting this expression to our variable and nothing else. So what should happen is the Y rotation value of the small gear will be put into the variable. And since this expression sets the Y rotation of the large gear, all this does so far is copy the Y rotation of the small gear to the large gear. Now I'll select the small gear and rotate it to show you what happens. I'm only going to be rotating the small gear on the Y axis, and so I'll lock the X and Z axes to prevent any accidental rotations. Now if I press R to rotate, you can see that the large gear rotates with it, but it's rotating in the wrong direction. So let's make a change to our expression. So I'll select the large gear, right click here, and select Edit Driver. Since the large gear rotated in the wrong direction, I'm going to add a minus sign in front of the variable name. Now when I rotate the small gear, the large gear rotates in the opposite direction, which is what we want. But you'll notice that it's rotating too fast. The small gear has 8 teeth and the large gear has 16 teeth. So the large gear should rotate at half the speed. So back in the driver panel, I'll divide the variable by 2. Now when I rotate the small gear, the large gear rotates at the correct speed. Next what we need to do is to align the gear teeth, so I'll start by setting the rotation of the small gear to 0 degrees. Now I'll select the large gear and open the driver panel. To align the teeth, we're going to add an offset. If I add 0 0.1, then you'll see the large gear move a little, but not enough. So I'll try 0 0.2. This looks good. Now when I rotate the small gear, 
the large gear is rotating at the right speed, the right direction, and the teeth are aligned. I'm going to set the rotation of the small gear to zero again. Next, we're going to add a driver to the cylinder. We'll set this up to let the rotation of the large gear drive the location of the cylinder. So select the cylinder, right click Z location, and add a driver. Make sure that Transform Channel is selected. For the object, we'll select the large gear. We're going to drive the cylinder using the gear's Y rotation value, so select that here. Now we can set an offset value to align the teeth of the gear with the teeth of the cylinder. I know from doing this before that an offset value of 4.07 works well. Now when I rotate the small gear, the cylinder moves up and down. The next driver that we'll add will be for the sphere. But first we need to do a couple of things to the sphere to get it ready. The driver that we'll be adding will scale the sphere on the z-axis. But if I scale it on the z-axis right now, both its top and bottom move toward its center. But we only want the top of the sphere to move, not the bottom. So to accomplish this, we need to set the origin of the sphere to the bottom. So tab into edit mode and switch to vertex select mode. Then press Z and select wireframe. Now select the center vertex on the bottom of the sphere. Then press Shift S and select cursor to selected. Now we'll be able to set the origin of the sphere to the 3D cursor. So tab back into object mode. Then from the object menu, select set origin and then origin to 3D cursor. I'll switch back to solid view. Now if I scale the sphere on the z-axis, the top moves but the bottom doesn't. There's one more change that we're going to make to the sphere before adding the driver. You'll notice that when I scale it on the z-axis, the width doesn't change. But if I were actually pressing down on a real ball, it would get wider. We can easily accomplish this by using a maintain volume constraint. So switch to the Object Constraints tab and add a Maintain Volume constraint. We're going to be pressing it down on the Z-axis, so click the Z button. Now if I scale the sphere on the Z-axis, the sides move out as the top is pressed down. Now we're ready to add a driver to the sphere. To make this easier, I'm going to rotate the small gear until the bottom of the cylinder is at the top of the sphere. When the cylinder is at this location, the scale of the sphere should be 1. We're going to drive the Z-scale of the sphere, so select the sphere, right-click Z-scale, and add a driver. Make sure that Transform Channel is selected. We're going to drive the scale of the sphere using the location of the cylinder. So for the object, select Cylinder. We're going to drive the sphere using the cylinder's Z location value. Let's start with the expression set to var. As you can see, this is not even close to what it should look like. This is what the sphere should look like when the cylinder is at this location. So let's figure out what the expression should be. First of all, when the cylinder moves down by one unit, the Z scale of the sphere should be reduced to 50%. So the change in the sphere scale should be half of the change in the cylinder's location. Remember that var holds the value of the cylinder's z location, so we need to divide var by 2. Next, we need to determine what the offset should be. You could always just try some different values until you find something that works, but let's try to figure it out. With the cylinder at this location, the scale of the sphere should be 1. This number tells us the current value of the cylinder's Z location. Var is holding this value, which is about 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So currently, this expression equals about 2. But the scale of the sphere should be 1 right now. So if we subtract 1, this expression will be equal to about 1. Now the sphere looks good. So I'll rotate the small gear to see what this looks like in motion. It presses the sphere down just fine, but when the cylinder lifts up too high, the sphere stretches with it. To prevent this, we can change our driver expression to a conditional expression. I'll show you how to do this. 
We'll start by adjusting the cylinder to the location where the scale of the sphere is about 1. Then select the sphere and open the driver panel. This expression is setting the Z scale value of the sphere. But we only want this to set the scale when the cylinder is below its current location. When the cylinder rises above this location, we just want the scale of the sphere to be 1. So at the end of the expression, type if var, followed by a less than sign, then type this number. It's close to 4, so I'll just use that. This number is the Z location of the cylinder right now. Remember that var holds the cylinder's Z location, so this condition is checking to see if the cylinder's Z location is less than this value. If this condition is true, then this will be used to set the scale of the sphere. Now we need to tell it what to use if the condition is false. So type else followed by 1. So if our condition is false, this value will be used for the scale of the sphere. So to summarize, when the cylinder drops below its current location, this will be used to set the scale. When the cylinder rises above its current location, the scale will be set to 1. Now when I rotate the small gear, the cylinder presses the sphere down in this direction, but it doesn't affect the sphere in this direction. I'll press Z and select Rendered so that we can see it in Rendered View. It's looking pretty good. By the way, I'm currently using the EV Render Engine. Now that the drivers are set up, we can easily set up some keyframes to animate this. So I'll set up the rotation of the small gear to a starting rotation, and then I'll press I and select Rotation. Then I'll move the timeline to frame 100, which will be the end of the animation, and then press I again and select Rotation. Now I'll move the frame to 50, rotate the small gear, press I and select Rotation. Next, I'll change the end value to 100. Now I'll move the frame to 1 and press the play button. I'll also turn off overlay so that the grid is not visible. As you can see, once the drivers are added, it's easy to set some keyframes to animate this. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.